Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. U.S. military forces must be prepared to carry out military operations in any type of environment and terrain, as demonstrated by developing weapons and vehicles with the necessary flexibility to adapt to these conditions. An example is amphibious vehicles used to land and support ground forces such as Marines in enemy territory during an amphibious assault. Currently, U.S. forces have various amphibious vehicles, including the amphibious assault ship LHA, mobile landing platform, and landing craft air cushion. This diversity of vehicles has resulted from important developments that seek to create solutions facing the greatest variety of terrains possible. One of these projects involved developing an amphibious transport system known as the Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector which can be launched from ordinary container ships to shore without using a harbor. Its secret is behind the captive air cells inside the vehicle's foam paddles, which allows it to propel itself through the water at up to 20 knots. These enclosed cells are flexible structures filled with compressed air held at a specific pressure to contribute to buoyancy and overall performance. With this process, the UHAC's weight is distributed over a larger area, so the vehicle can cross through various terrains including soft sand and uneven surfaces, without getting stuck. During RIMPAC 2014, an advanced warfighting experiment featured a half-scale prototype sponsored by the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab. The goal of the Marine Corps lab was to assist with the development of the UHAC technology, evaluating its potential for diverse missions beyond traditional amphibious assaults. This was featured during the ship to shore tests, where the UHAC navigated from the ship to the beach using its paddle system demonstrating its ability to travel through water and over obstacles. Here, the concept demonstrator is a 4 tenths scale prototype, sizing 42 feet long, 26 feet wide, and 18 feet tall. The full-size U-Hack is projected to be 84 feet long and up to 34 feet high. This demonstration at RIMPAC and other tests provided valuable data on the vehicle's performance in realistic conditions, which allows further development and refinement. Its successful loading and unloading capabilities 
showed its potential to carry important cargo. However, there are still some challenges that must be overcome, such as scaling up the craft or determining how the U-Hack should handle weight distribution. So what that allows it to do is to cross terrain that you wouldn't normally be able to get uh, traditional or, or existing vehicles such as an LCAC across. So we're using this vehicle as a demonstrator, as a potential future connector uh, that could allow us to come into areas that are unprepared uh, in the future of the Marine Corps. This prototype was prepared during the exercise inside the well deck of an amphibious landing ship. This ship area consists of a floodable section, partially submerged to allow the U-Hack to drive or float into it. Such a process allowed members of the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab to study the handling and maneuvering within confined spaces, and at the same time, verify how quickly the U-Hack can prepare for an amphibious mission from a ship like the USS Rushmore. Well decks like the one seen in some landing ships are vital for amphibious operations. Those hangar-like decks are located at the waterline in the stern of some amphibious warships. This design allows amphibious vehicles to efficiently embark large vessels when returning from their missions. Usually, the landing ships use water pumps for ballasting and lower the well deck below the water line, which allows different vessels to enter or be deployed. During such deployments, either from the beaches or from the landing ships, the amphibious crafts must rely on their propulsion systems to move across the water. Depending on the type of vehicle, each is based on a different design that may be more beneficial for specific environmental conditions. Diesel engines drive propellers for landing craft utility vehicles, which work like conventional boats, using rudders located behind the propellers to steer. Others, like the amphibious assault vehicle, use water jet propulsion systems that also control their steering. Once they reach land, the system shuts down and transitions to tracked movement like a regular land vehicle. Thanks to its compact and reliable performance, the AAV has not changed its design since its first development in the early 70s. The capabilities of this vehicle are tested during splash and recovery exercises that focus on fundamental skills like vehicle handling and water tactical maneuvers, and recovery procedures. The water operations start in the well deck, 
where the crew floods the section with the ballast tanks, enabling the AAVs to float and exit the ship. Thanks to its water jet propulsion system, the AAV can maneuver easily away from the well deck towards the beach. Here, Marines perform recovery exercises using tow ropes and other equipment to pull the stranded AAV back to land. Once the mission is completed, the craft returns to the partially flooded. Finally, the ship de-ballasts, raising the well deck and draining the water to secure the vehicles. Another form of technology used for amphibious vehicles is based on hovercraft technology. Developed during the 1970s, the landing craft air cushion vehicles are propelled by four gas turbines connected to four centrifugal lift fans and two thrust fans. Such a system is what makes it operate in both land and sea environments and be able to clear four-foot obstacles. This hovercraft is widely used by the military because it can carry a 60 to 75 ton payload, including weapon systems, equipment, cargo, and personnel from ship to shore. And to keep it running swiftly, the craft needs a crew of five sailors, including a craft master, navigator, craft engineer, deck engineer, and load master. The technology of the hovercraft makes unloading happen quickly and efficiently, reducing the LCAC's exposure to any threats on the beach during missions. During the unloading, vehicles and equipment are driven off the LCAC onto the beach using its ramp, giving the craft strategic and tactical value. Although the LCAC has a life extension program of about 10 years, this time has allowed the development of the U-Hack that will replace the LCAC. During this kind of mission, the hovercrafts are launched from the well decks, which must have at least 5 inches of depth. These technological developments for amphibious operations are demonstrated during the different military exercises carried out by U.S. forces. Among these events, the ship-to-shore maneuver exploration and experimentation advanced naval technology exercise focuses on showcasing autonomous vehicles, augmented reality systems, and advanced wireless networks during a series of amphibious beach landings held at Base Camp Marine Corps Pendleton in California. This exercise concentrated on technologies that improve the transition from sea to land during amphibious operations.
Likewise, the event shows innovations to enhance effectiveness of fire support during beach landings and further operations. With the diversity of tests carried out during the exercise, the different engineering teams and combat groups compiled direct feedback and technical assessments from warfighters and senior managers to inform future technology development and acquisition. Among the technologies demonstrated in the S2ME2 Ant X, Many of them involved using unmanned vehicles equipped with sensors to gather intelligence and assess battle space conditions, including identifying threats and obstacles. One of those unmanned craft is the multi-utility tactical transport, which is designed to aid dismounted infantry units in increasing their mobility and payload capacity. During beach landings, the MUT can be armed with sensors and cameras to provide real-time reconnaissance data, helping to identify threats and obstacles on the beach and inland areas. Technological developments during the exercise not only focused on ground devices, but also on flying tools as seen with Martin UAV's VBAT-128. This unmanned aircraft system is suited for sea, air, and land missions, particularly in amphibious and ship-to-shore scenarios. It can take off and land vertically, which is crucial for operations on ships or in confined areas. Considering the difficulties and obstacles that may arise during a beach landing operation, developing new devices is essential to improve the effectiveness of missions and ensure the safety of troops. This also encourages the emergence of new technologies that can eventually be transferred outside the military forces and improve the conditions of civilian life. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.